Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Liam's Hockey. Coming to you here at the end of the week, brought to you of course by Hosey and Brown and Wallace Service Center. They'll be the garage today that'll be highlighted and we'll have a few comments about them and my dear friend Todd Wallace uh, a little bit uh, a little bit later before we wrap up and uh, do of course our Irish toast and everything else. Talk a little hockey today, here we go. And uh, last night, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Ottawa Senators completed their trifecta for this week with a Leaf victory, albeit on the scoreboard, one that maybe was more expected earlier this week. Tell you what, it wasn't a 7-3 game. I don't know how many times you would say that about a hockey game that ends up with 10 goals and one team scoring 7. But the Senators hit four posts, including, I think, two in the third period, I mean, an inch or two here or there, and let alone a number of other chances that they had. The Leafs played at least a little bit better with the lead than they did on Monday night when they, in epic fashion, blew another four-goal lead. And Ottawa stormed back for the first time in their history, raced a four-goal deficit and came back and, and won. I think I erroneously, erroneously had said that made that was their 241st time Trailing by four, I think I was off by three or four games there. I think it was a, it was a handful more. I think it was like 244. Anyway, last night, they got it done. Austin Matthews scores a couple, but uh, that leaf, they're, they're leaky. Now, they got the Habs here in a trap game. Habs haven't played in a week. And, and uh, all the practice in the world, after coming off actually a pretty emotional victory over said Leafs, last Saturday, and here they are playing them again, and then they roll right into to, uh, Ottawa here on Sunday for a very, very tough out Ottawa Senator team, notwithstanding the four-goal loss last night. They, they are a tough out right now. Talk on that more in just a second. Just to respect to last night, and I'm going to keep saying it here in my little corner of the world, because others are saying in theirs that they feel this North Division is worthy of, of a high mention in terms of let's give credit where it's due to whoever it may be playing in it, whether it's your first place Leafs or this team, the Ottawa Senators, who have been a tough out for about 10 games in a row now, or the teams that are in the middle. And, and let alone Montreal, we'll see where they are. as they got to get back on the horse here. They, they currently hold down second, but they will not have of tonight. Somebody will pass them for second tonight. Now, as a configuration, games played in the whole nine yards. But fact is, look, the North is not. The North is the weakest division. In my opinion, it's the weakest division. Who's watching the other games? Is there anybody else watching the other the American teams playing? I, I, I just wrote down, I got Boston, Tampa Bay, Florida, Vegas, St. Louis, Carolina, and, and a healthy Philadelphia are all as good or better than Toronto and Montreal right now. That's seven teams. Now, I can take the Leafs and maybe the Habs and insert them in there, in the mix, but I don't have either one of them ahead of those teams right now based on what I've seen this year. Now, they've all had losses. Everybody's lost, regulation losses. They've all, like right now, Boston's lost two in a row and Krejci got hurt last night. And Tampa Bay lost their last game. I don't even have Dallas in there. How do you measure them? They've hardly played. They had COVID issues. Now they've got the power outages in Texas, so their games are still not on. So they were in the Stanley Cup final last year. How do you measure them? So it's so skewed. But based on what I've watched, I see the North as an incredibly weak division. And as a result, it's very difficult to get a, to get a read. And what else? What also skews that is, even if things were normal and everybody was playing everybody as we normally were in an 82-game season, Austin Matthews could still very easily have 16 goals, and Connor McDavid still could very easily be leading the league in scoring. So, regardless of the fact that they're playing what I think is weaker opposition, I don't think it really would have mattered anyway. Austin Matthews is one of the premier scorers in the world, and Connor McDavid is the best hockey player in the world. So it's 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 a little bit kind of skewed, and it's all going to come out in the wash after as close to 56 games as we'll get to play in whatever we get out of this season. 
and some form of a playoff that hopefully at the very least will include four best of sevens. God willing, we'll get that if we're heading the right track here, COVID notwithstanding. So the Leafs get the win, but it wasn't pretty. None of the three games were. They blew the lead. They barely hung on to win game two. And I'll tell you what, they took a 5-1 lead last night, and Ottawa made it 5-2, and Twitter blew up. <laughs> Twitter blew up, man, when they made it 5-1. And the Leafs <laughs> made it 5-2. Everybody was going, here we go. And of course, it was 6-2, 6-3, and then Tavares floated one in from the blue line. Matt Murray came in. The Hog got hurt. Feel bad for him because he kind of turned his game around myself. A lot of others wrote the guy off, man. I said, how could you even put him in that lineup again? But you got to think that, um, let's say if Matt Murray has a great game Sunday against Montreal, maybe you come right back with him. I think they play Tuesday, Sunday, Tuesday against the Habs. That's enough time, time off, and if you want to keep the momentum going. Or at some point here, all depending on, uh, on the Hogs injury, uh, Joey Decord probably going to get a shot in that Ottawa in the Ottawa time tent there. So uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how it plays out. The other thing that's come up with all of this, uh, especially Matthews here in the last this week in particular, as he's been lighting up Ottawa, is a lot of chatter as there always is. Normally, it's being fueled by McDavid lately. Greatest, best careers, prime on prime, scorers, overall players. I mean, there's so many criterias. And what I've been saying about McDavid so far this season, I, he's, he's as good as anybody that I've ever seen carry the puck going up the ice. I, I, to me, it's, it's, he's a 1 and a 1A with Bobby Orr in terms of carrying the puck. Still not ready to anoint him in overall gamemanship, and there's so many other factors. But I'm just talking specifically carrying the puck. Okay? Understand the criteria here. Austin Matthews right now is proving to be, maybe he's taking the torch from Ovi. How many of you are watching Washington Capital games? Because what I'm about to say, if you're watching the games, you will know. You will understand what I'm about to say. And what I'm saying is that Alexander Ovechkin is being checked more closely than I've ever seen in, in his career. He's got guys on him. And you know where it's really noticeable? He's on the power play. Are you watching the games? Because he's got no room out there. Now, he made a great play uh, to, and, and got the puck through. I forget who actually banged it in. He got the primary assist on it. But look, he's not scoring. He's got what? Six goals? Five, six goals? He's got the same as Crosby right now. Not to say that he could. Maybe he'll go out and have a five-goal game. But these, these games right now, they're all four-pointers. Everybody's playing the same teams in their own division. It's only going to get more difficult. And it's it just everybody has their day. You know, Ovi may fi finally start sliding here on the back nine of his goal scoring exploits we'll have to see point is is that maybe the torch is being passed austin matthews notwithstanding that i think he's playing against collectively very weak defenses i don't think anybody in the north has a particularly good defense including montreal my own team i mean shea weber's not so far has not had a real good season like it's been okay petrie's been off the charts and Edmondson has been real solid on the back end. He's come as expected. He's come as advertised. But, you know, Sherratt, whatever. He's playing with Weber. He's played all right. Then you got Kulak, Mete. I mean, it, it, you know, he's been spared in a couple times. Uh, and Romanoff, the kid. That, that's, that's the second place team right now in the north. It's not a defense that just puts the fear of God in you. I mean, they're physical, but they're not, they're not really mobile. And they transition okay because Montreal's forwards have been so good for the most part. Not so much the last few games, but, you know, now they've been off a week, so it's all skewed. But Austin Matthews is pure snipe, man. He's pure snipe. Well, it doesn't matter. Give credit where it's due. His release is unfreaking believable. As I said, even though all things were totally normal, he could still be leading the league in goal scoring. Is he going to score 50? I don't think so. I don't think he will this year. He got ripped off last year. He would have done it easily. He will have 50 goal seasons in his career. Where am I ready to slot him all time? Give me a break. <laughs> I 
this team hasn't even won a playoff series in 17 years. And so, you know, I mean, come on. Do it when it counts. When you really got three checkers draped all over you. And when you have to fight through a ton of stuff. And, and uh, look, he's got all the talent. He's got the release. Right now, he's seeing it. He's feeling it. But let's just hold off. Let's just hold off a second. Who's the opposition been? And, and, and really, where is he overall? He's not even in the conversation yet. So what he's doing right now is pretty special, but you have to measure it in terms of what we're being given. And that's a North Division with a skewed baseball-type schedule, uh, the weakest division out of the four, and, and poor defenses. And, uh, and they're a high-flying offense, so he's benefiting also from playing with a great setup man that they've developed fantastic chemistry with right now in Mitch Marner. And that, that proof in point, uh, his second goal last night, beautiful reverse by Marner behind the net. Boom, Matthews grabs it, throws it out front before Matt Murray even realizes there's anything still was happening behind the net. It was an amazing play, great goal, speaks to their chemistry. Give Austin Matthews all, all the days, all the do in the world. But uh, let's just hold off on this talk. Some of it, oh my God. I know it's largely led by Leaf fans, and they can't help themselves. I mean, any single solitary win for a Leaf fan is a, is a cause for a party. They're starving, right? I mean, they go back. They have letters from their grandparents saying, this is when we were good. And, you know, it's back to black and white TV. And our prime minister in Canada was Lester B. Pearson. I mean, you got to go back decades and decades and decades. So they're starving for any little thing. And right now, Matthews is giving it to them. And so they're, they're eating it up. And, 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 and good on them, because it is, it is kind of funny. They do find the most creative ways to blow it and, and lose it. And when it comes time to, uh, to really put the pedal to the metal. But... This, this division this year could be set up for them to make some noise because uh, there's just not a lot. I mean, there's a few teams, including Montreal, who could give them hell in a best of seven. But um, I don't see anybody definitively right now that I would say that's, that I would say is definitely a lock to beat Toronto. That's my point. Sure, Montreal could. Sure, maybe Winnipeg could. Maybe Edmonton could. I don't think Calgary, Vancouver, or Ottawa could in a best of seven, but I think any of those other te three teams possibly could beat them, whether first round, second round, what have you. So if the Leafs get out or the Habs get out or somebody gets out of the North, they'll have a couple of decent series under their belts. And somebody who is going to come out of the North and be in the semis, it's going to happen. But uh, from there, I think we're in a world of hurt. Anyway, we've got 40 games to go before all that's uh, talked about more. That was a comment from last night. Uh, also, just wanted to mention... Uh, some great games last night, but I wanted to talk about uh, the Chicago Blackhawks and the run they've been on. A lot of people calling them a surprise team. Again, skewed schedule, man. They've been pounding Detroit. I mean, t pounding them in terms of just getting W after W. I think they've played six of their games against Detroit or close to it. And they've played, uh, they've beat Columbus a couple of times. Yeah, they got a couple of OT wins against Carolina, who they're setting up for against, I think, tonight and tomorrow. Got a couple games. We'll see now. They got this hotshot rookie goalie out of Finland. They signed as a free agent. So if you get a chance to watch Chicago, Carolina, at some point in the next 48 hours, then he'll be in net, undoubtedly. His name's Kevin Lankinen. He's 25 years old. They signed him as a free agent a little less than three years ago. He was never drafted. Good sized guy. Um, he uh, they signed him as a free agent. Put him in the American Hockey League. He played in Rockford in the American Hockey League team. He, they actually sent him down the East Coast League. This is a guy who two years ago was in the East Coast League. So I hate when people say East Coast League and, and, and they say it in, in a demeaning fashion. There's over 400 graduates from that league have gone to the NHL. In fact, it's probably closer to 500 at this point. And that league's barely 30 years old. It's an incredible feeder system to the American Hockey League and subsequently the NHL. And there's many guys living right here in Ottawa who've played in that league. So it's, it's, a, it's a good league, and it's a lot better hockey than people think. Anyway, Lankinen was there. He only was there for six games, but this is only a couple years ago. And now he's starring for the Chicago Blackhawks. So let's see where they are after these two, two, two games, because 
Carolina is is um, is playing some pretty good hockey. Now they've been really good for a couple of years. They have crashed and burned in the playoffs because they have little or no grit. They are an incredibly talented, incredibly skillful team. And I touched on Brock McGinn and how much I love him. And you've got an older stall, and you got a couple guys on D, got some pushback. But really, they do, they do not have enough intestinal grit, fortitude to, to, to win in the playoff yet, in my opinion. They'll have to prove it to me. So far, they haven't. Not calling them a bunch of jerks and the whole Don Cherry thing. I mean, I hated all that, but who cares? Just all I had to do was turn the channel after the game. I love watching them play. I mean, they've got some of the more exciting players right now, for sure. Aho. Uh, I mean, I could watch that guy all day. Uh, they, they've got some, and look, at Brock McGinn's actually having an, on his way to a career year, and I'm a big fan of him, and I've mentioned that already. But uh, you look at their last game against Florida. I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place here, but I want to get a comment in about Jonathan Huberdo. I'm watching on Twitter, and again, the majority of my feed probably is Canadians, right? Canadian, Canada Canadians, not Montreal Canadian fans, but... But, so I, I know, I know the majority aren't watching the games because I'm watching people going, what's going on? What's going on there with Florida? Like, to me, Florida is way more impressive than Chicago. I know Chicago's doing it without, without Jonathan Taves and Kirby Doc. But <laughs> look at the strength of their schedule. They, their first four games of the year they lost. They played Tampa twice and Florida twice, and they were 0-4. So they've done all this, not taking anything away from them. They've gotten some great efforts from a number of other players. And as I mentioned, the goaltending leading the way with Lankinen. But but Florida, Jonathan Huberto is playing the best hockey of his life. He almost single-handedly beat Carolina in that last game. I wonder how many people saw the highlights. He got two goals and assist. His first goal was all world. Everything Matthews is doing so far this year as a shooter, Jonathan Huberto did the exact same thing on that first goal. Watch the highlight of it and tell me he wasn't. His assist was sick was absolutely ridiculous. It prompted TSN to do one of their list best spinorama goals. He did one of those spinorama assist plays. I forget who got the goal. And then he scored the OT winner, which was an absolute masterpiece as well. He's in the top five or six in scoring. I think right now he's in the conversation for Team Canada. He's having a career year, and he is absolutely the straw that is stirring the drink in Florida. Now, they're getting some other really good performances too. Not the least of which, and I mentioned it last uh, last Liam's Hockey. Max Weger here. Winchester's that way. That's where he played Junior B. <laughs> it's unbelievable. He is really good. He is playing really, really well. And it's so awesome to see. And he's tough back there too. He doesn't take any crap from anybody. And uh, I'm a big, big fan. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But uh, keep an eye on the Panthers and that they've been pretty exciting as well. A um, couple of things, yeah. I'm not going to get in too much into this. Just, uh, the spinoff of Austin Matthews and, and Connor McDavid has led to people also uh, talking about lists, best this, best that, everything else. I'm just going to make the one statement here. I've said it, I've written it for years and decades. I'll just to refresh. Look, if you need a goal scored, if you're a coach and you need a goal scored, you need to win a game to win the series or to win the Stanley Cup. You need a goal scored. There's one man and one man only. Of the more than 8,000 players to play in the NHL, you're only taking one guy. Maurice the Rocket Richard. Look up his numbers when it was on the line. Playoff hat tricks, game winners, overtime goals. Regular season. Games played, goals ratio, everything. No, no, no one's close. No one's close to the rocket. There's a bunch of guys would come in in second place, whether it's Gretzky, Lemieux, Messier, Bossy, Lafleur, Brad Hall. Go down the line. Ovi, you know, he's got a Stanley Cup now and a Conn Smythe. Go down the line. But there's the rocket. Then there's everybody else. That's if you need a goal scored. If your other discussions are best career. I mean, that's when you're bringing, you're bringing back, you know, Gretzky and Lemieux and Howe and Orr. You, those, are, those are your Mount Rushmore of best players, okay? It's those four. 
If you don't think it's Orr, maybe you think it's Mario. If you don't think it's Mario, you think it's Gretzky. If you're older, maybe you think it's Howe. And who's creeping in there? If there's a shadow looming in the Mount Rushmore, say just over North Gore somewhere, <laughs> it's Sidney Crosby, okay? He's right there. And and uh, then you get a bunch of other guys. Eh? Then you get the Rocket and Bobby Hall and Bellavo, and you get into your top defensemen and, and guys like Eddie Shore and Nick Lidstrom and Denny Potvin and, and, and goaltenders and Patrick Waugh and Dominic Hasek and Marty Brodeur and Terry Sawchuk and Jacques Plant and Glenn Hall and... They all start to come in together, right? But you've got your Mount Rushmore of all-time greats. You've got your number one clutch scorer of all time in Rocket Richard. Just everybody else just have a Coke and a smile and relax there. Or a shot of whiskey like I'm about to. <laughs> Settle down. If you want to include McDavid in anything, it's carrying the puck right now. The poor son of a bitch can barely get a playoff game to save his life. I mean, what the hell are they going to do there? They got to figure something out. Kenny Holland's a smart guy. Dave Tippett is a respected coach, but they have got to improve that 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 supporting cast. They have to. They're abysmal through the lineup. They're not beating anybody in the North in a best of seven. I can't see it. I cannot see it. Despite McDavid and Drysital and Nugent Hopkins maybe playing the best hockey of his career, it's still not enough. It's just on the back end, largely. Even though Larson's had a pretty good season, too. But then what have they been getting for goaltending? Get Mike Smith back, he kicks out BBs, then he starts looking like the guy that kind of played last year. You got Koskin in, who's big, looks good, makes a bunch of great saves, and then they're firing, whistling pucks through him. Like it's Swiss cheese. Like, it's it's tough trophy to win, man. It's a tough trophy to win. We all know that. But anyway, I digress. So, a toast. I'm going to toast, uh, then we'll talk a little bit about Wallace Surf Center. Uh, my toast today is to Gary Lehman. It's his birthday. Gary Lehman is 57 years old today, and I've gotten to know Gary a little bit, worked a few gigs with him, in fact, did a Zoom cast with him uh, just uh, uh, about five weeks ago, six weeks ago, and um, he, he looked great. He seemed to be doing good. And I want to talk to about him for a couple of reasons. Number one, he's a Stanley Cup winner. Okay, at the end of the day, he got traded to the Montreal Canadiens, as Bob McKenzie would say, the trade was one for one. He got traded for Brian Scrooglin. Now, Scrooglin had a hell of a career in Montreal. Scored the quickest OT goal in NHL history, playoff history, nine seconds against the Flames in 86. Won Stanley Cup that year. Won a Calder Cup in Sherbrooke the year before. And, and uh, was in the 89 finals with him, gave his heart and soul, and, and, and uh, was traded for Gary Lehman straight up. Lehman comes, plays 20 games for the Montreal Canadiens, got 18 points. 18 points in 20 games. Now, the last time I checked, that's pretty freaking good. It's just he gets so diminished, right? He goes to the, to the he plays with him in the, uh, in the playoffs. He didn't get in every game. He was spotted in. And uh, but he still ended up playing 11 playoff games, scored a couple assists, got his name on the Stanley Cup. But here's the thing about Gary, and this is a very, very cool thing because he's the only guy in NHL history to hold this unique distinction. Now, let me just pour a whiskey here because I <laughs> they generally pour them pretty freaking big. All right, maybe this one's yep, it's another double. That's okay. So, um Gary Lehman is the only player in NHL history to improve his point totals in seven consecutive seasons. Nobody else has ever done that. Isn't that a cool stat? I think it's a very cool stat. It's not really a trivia question. It's a stat. There's a difference. Explain that all another time. But, uh, yeah, it's unbelievable. He, uh, and it culminated with his last big year where he scored 50 goals for the Toronto Maple Leafs, playing on the hound line with Russ Cortnell and Wendell Clark. Gary was a defenseman when he was drafted, much like Wendell Clark was, exactly like Wendell Clark was, went up front just like Wendell did, and played on the same line, and uh, they were outstanding. It was an outstanding line. I loved it. Loved watching it. Ironically, two-thirds of them ended up in Montreal. Kind of funny. Cortnell helped the Habs go to the finals in 89, and Lehman uh, helped them go to the final in 93, and got his name on the Stanley Cup, so... A little, uh, little bit of an assist there from a couple of former Notre Dame hounds. So I'm going to salute and toast 
my good friend, I shouldn't call him good friend, but a friend for sure, consider him a friend, Gary Lehman, turned 57 years old today. Is there anything else I want to uh, cover off here? I don't think so. That's pretty much it. Uh, Wallace Service Center. So this hit, as you all know, courtesy of Hosey and Brown, Wallace Service Center is on uh, Bank Street. Been open since um, 1995. They opened up. Owned and operated by Todd Wallace. Now, I'll hazard a guess. There's hardly anybody that's south of Hunt Club, lives south of Hunt Club, that hasn't heard of Todd Wallace. Especially the further you go up Bank Street and up to Highway 31. If there's one thing I would say about that garage... It's, and everybody that works in it, led by Todd, is community. That is a community-run garage. There's no question the hundreds and hundreds of clients that they have come primarily from the rural, from the rurals south of the city. Todd was a very good hockey player growing up. He ascended up to the Junior B level, played for the Metcalf Jets. Very, very popular local Junior B team over a number of different decades, but definitely when Todd, he played as well. And uh, whether it's Buck on the phones or that great staff inside, which includes Larry Robinson's brother, Mo, is an employee there, an absolutely fantastic mechanic. They all are inside. Multiple bays. Todd loves his old cars, and they're in great shape. He's got a fantastic little kitchenette area there where, you know, family, friends, and whatnot, pre-COVID and post-COVID, whenever those days are over. You know, he's the type of guy where, look, if you're stuck and it's a cold day or whatever and you and you got to wait, you got a beautiful waiting area there, but if you really, really are upset by what's happened at your vehicle, you can step into the kitchenette area there, maybe have a cold one. Like there's very few garages that have that ability and opportunity, and will and will do so. It speaks to community, really. Todd is is maybe the best community guy running a business that I know in the region of Ottawa, Carlton, and he happens to be running a garage. And, and it's been open since 1995. Uh, 5217 Bank Street. They specialize in everything. The whole nine yard, as most garages do. They're, they're, uh, uh, the, what they've been able to do, and I will finish by saying this. I'm, I'm going to speak as a bias here because Todd's been my mechanic for a number of years now. And, and uh, I drive a 2011 Ford Edge. They have taken that thing and put, whether it be a Band-Aid on it, or have rebuilt certain parts of it. When I think of my exhaust in particular, where I had some problems a couple years ago, and have kept this baby on the road for me, because frankly, it runs pretty good. It's run pretty good, but uh, Wallace's has taken care of it for me. So, 5217 Bank Street Wallace Service Center. They have the best work Christmas party in the history and the region of Ottawa Carlton. If you've never been, bring your vehicle into Wallace's. Make an appointment with Buck. Get it serviced. Talk a little hockey with Mo Robinson. And get on the list. And go to the Christmas party. Make sure you have a ride home. Because you won't be disappointed. It's the absolute best. And I want to thank him personally for everything he's done for me. They are one of the greatest garages around and the greatest group of people. Here's to Toddy. And uh, here's to Gary Lehman on his 57th birthday. God bless everybody. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Enjoy the hockey. Enjoy hopefully some of the hostilities, and we'll talk to you next week. G'day.